Recently, I went shopping and picked up this Dremel oscillating multi-tool. It's the Dremel Multimax MM35. Sounds impressive. I'm gonna open this box up and see what's inside, and then I'm gonna give it a try and see what it can do. And I'm gonna see if it has any application for woodworking. So stick around, it's gonna be fun. My name is James, and this is Homestyle Woodcraft. All right, let's see what's in this box. Here's the main multi-tool. For a close-up view of the blades, we've got these two wooden drywall blades. We've got these uh, wood blades right here, and this is a metal and wood blade, and another metal and wood blade. This is a drywall jab saw and a flexible scraper. Then we've got the sanding pad that attaches to the tool and sanding accessories, and of course, We've got the owner's manual, the bag, and the tool itself. Now, interestingly, some of these have different ways of attaching, you'll notice, than the others. And this is what Dremel calls a, a dual interface. So the upper portion here connects with Dremel, Bosch, Makita, Milwaukee, and Rockwell. And the lower portion connects with DeWalt, Fine, Porter Cable, and Rigid. Here are the specifications. It runs on 120 volts. It's a 3.5 amp motor. And the oscillations per minute are 10,000 to 21,000, depending on how you have it set. The oscillation angle is 3.2 degrees and the tool weighs just a hair over three pounds. Here's a quick orientation to the tool. Here's the on off switch, the variable speed dial. There's vents on the sides and on the bottom. Here's the clamping knob up here and the clamping flange right here at the bottom. Let me show you how to attach an accessory blade. The first step is to rotate the clamping knob counterclockwise until when you push it, the clamping flange extends like this right here. Now notice these little metal protrusions on this plate here. Those will match up to the holes on the accessory blade. So you extend that, you extend the flange there and seat the blade onto those little metal protrusions. And then all you have to do is rotate the knob clockwise until it's tightened down. I think it takes me around 11 turns. And then your blade is snug and tight. The Dremel multi-tool is designed to cut wood, metal, and plastic. And because you can fit all kinds of different accessory blades on it, you can do a whole bunch of different kinds of things. At least that's what I understand. I've never had one before. And I've never used one before today. But today I'm particularly interested in the question of whether or not it can be used for a tool in woodworking. So I'm gonna go do some cuts on wood and then I'll give you my first impression. Now let me share with you a few observations and a few tips I learned uh, while I was cutting on those scraps of wood. And I'm going to speak from a perspective of what's ideal. So the first thing is this is not going to replace standard saws that you will find in a workshop, like a table saw or a band saw or things like that. Uh, it's just not. And my second observation is that this is not a great tool for long cuts like a rip cut 
or a very thick piece of wood either. Now, having said those two things, it can do small cuts quite well. And because the tool is so maneuverable, you can really kind of make some cuts you're not going to be able to make with other tools. So in that sense, it's kind of a nice addition, especially since this is a multi-tool and can do a lot of different things. As far as precision goes, um, this is not going to be a highly precise tool. I think it will be difficult to like create a fence or something to, to do a straight line. I was trying to do a flush cut and I really chewed into the piece I set up for a fence. But I'm not sure if it's a limitation of my skill set or the tool. Well, you can use this tool to follow a line, just like you would with a jigsaw or a scroll saw or maybe a band saw. In that sense, uh, you can get that level of precision. Now, as I said before, I was speaking from an ideal, but sometimes it's not about what is the best tool for the job, but rather what tool do you have for the job, especially in a small shop. Now, let me give you three tips uh, for using this Dremel oscillating multi-tool. Number one, I would say use both hands, have both hands available. Don't try to hold on to the workpiece and do it. Um, I really think you should have both hands available for controlling the tool and for being safe. Number two, don't force the tool into the wood. It will bog down and it will let you know right away that it's bogging down and your cut becomes less effective and you're probably putting a lot of strain on the motor. And number three, make sure you have your workpiece clamped down well. If you don't, it will vibrate a lot. And if it's vibrating a lot, it won't cut the piece of wood very well. I know because I just did it. <laughs> All right, now, one thing I'm curious about is can this tool be used for carving, for like power carving? So I traced out a heart. I'm gonna make it for Nancy, or I'm gonna try to make it for Nancy, and we'll see how it does. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I'd say not too bad. Well, what do you think? Not too bad, huh? And it really could use some more sanding and shaping, but uh, at least for me, I'm satisfied that you really could do some power carving with this tool. And in the hands of somebody who is an artist, you could probably do some pretty cool stuff. Anyway, overall, I'm pretty satisfied that this is a tool that's got some potential, and I'm looking forward to learning more about it and its uses. And check out that video right there. It looks really good, and I'll bet you like it. Thanks for watching.